Hello, I'm Carl Rowland with Sherline Products. Uh, the video that we're going to do right now is going to show you how to true up the shoulder on your spindle in order to get your end mill holders, chucks, and other accessories that thread on to run as true as possible. Okay. Um, so what I'd like to start by saying is our on our mill, I'm showing it on the mill first because truing it up on the mill is a lot harder. On the lathe, it's real easy. It's just a facing operation. Okay. Uh, on the mill, we'll have customers that call up and say their end mill holder is running out uh, excessively. Okay, the way we make our spindle thread and the threads in both our chucks and our end mill holders is we hold the pitch diameter at the high side on the spindle and we hold it at the low side on the end mill holder. Okay, so it's literally about a thou away from being an interference fit, which is why some of your end mill holders might be a, a little snug when you get them and, and put them on. So basically we have to hold those tolerances that tight in order to keep the run out as, as minimal as possible, okay? The next thing that affects your run out is the surface finish on your end mill holder and the surface finish on your the shoulder of your spindle. Because once you thread it on, that shoulder to shoulder mating is also squaring up your end mill holder or your chuck. So most of the time when people have excessive run out, it's because they've had a chip or something on their end mill holder or on the shoulder of their spindle. They put it on, they tighten it down, and now you have a chip dent in here, okay? Um, but once the chip dent is in there, now everything you thread onto there is gonna be running out a little bit, okay? The, uh, the tolerances that we're capable of holding, and we try to hold very tight tolerances on our machine and our accessories, uh, the surface, the face of the spindle, the shoulder right here, we hold that within about a half a thou, okay? On the end mill holders, we try to hold the run out on these, the assembled run out, uh, to a thou or less, okay? Um, the assembled run out, if I make this part perfect and I hold it within a thousandths tolerance, and I make this part perfect and hold it within a half thou tolerance, you have an assembled tolerance of a thou and a half right there, okay? So just so you understand how a stack tolerance and assembled tolerance works. Okay, on for your for your end mill holders and anything else that goes onto your your spindle. If you want absolute perfection, the closest you can possibly get, then what you want to do is come in here and just take a skim cut on the shoulder face. Now, when you do that, you are now cutting that shoulder face dead true to the assembled headstock. Okay, and then everything else that you put on there should run truer because you have a perfect surface. As an example, a 3 8 end mill holder, this guy right here is about an inch and 1.2 long. If there's a little variation on that surface, your run out here is going gonna, is gonna to increase the run out at the end of your end mill holder. The longer the end mill holder, that same interference variation is going to have more run out at the end because it's sticking out further away from where that interference, that variation is, okay? So what I'm gonna do in this video is show you how to, to cut your shoulder on your spindle so it's dead true to your headstock and your machine. On a lathe, what you would do is put your cutting tool on a tool post and just come in and just make a skim cut. On the mill, what you have to do is, is hold, a, hold your cutting tool and we've got a cutting tool right here that's high speed steel, okay? And this guy has about a 30 degree included angle and I'm holding it at an angle, clamping it in the vise, okay? So what we're gonna do is clamp the cutting tool, high-speed seal cutting tool in the vise, and then we're gonna bring our headstock down until it touches, and then we're gonna make a cut on that surface. So the first thing I wanna do, okay, one other thing, if you have run out, you can put an indicator on here and actually check the run out, Although when you put the indicator on there, the tip of your indicator is only gonna hit on one area of the entire surface. Okay, if you turn your spindle on and you just put your finger on here, okay, if you have a, a little high spot or something, you can generally feel the high spot with your finger. Okay, so that's, that's the first thing to do. So this one, this one has a, just a slight high spot, nothing, nothing great. 
so what we'll do is we'll bring this guy down and now you're basically turning your mill into a lathe. Oh, actually, so what I want to do first is mark my shoulder, sorry. So with magic marker, I mark the entire face of the shoulder, and that way when I make my cut, when I make my cut, I can actually see that it cleaned up the entire surface. So first I'm gonna bring my Z-axis down, and I'm gonna get it close. Then I'm gonna move my Y-axis to get the cutting point of my cutter on center line with a spindle. So I'm just gonna move it out and you can eyeball this, it doesn't have to be perfect. So right now the cutting edge of my cutter is on center line with the spindle. Okay, I'm going to move my cutter in and move it down. What I wanna do is make sure that the back side of my cutter is not gonna cut the threads. So right now, if I was off a little bit, I would just loosen this guy up and adjust the angle of my cutter, okay? And the easier, easiest way to do this would be to actually loosen it like so, okay? And then I could actually bring my Z-axis down, and if I have to move it down a little bit, I can move it down with that surface of the spindle that I'm gonna cut and then lock it in place. I'm gonna bring it back up. So right now what I wanna do is I wanna move in in my X axis until I actually make a cut on the undercut behind the thread and in front of the shoulder. So I'm gonna turn it on and I'm gonna move my axis in, okay, you're looking for the cut, but you're always gonna hear the cut before you see it, so you're actually just listening. Right there, I've got a cut, okay? So just cut. I'm gonna write down the number on my dial, my hand wheel. If this is CNC, you just zero it out right there for your x-axis. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is gonna move away back out again, okay? So it's not cutting anything in the x-axis, and I'm gonna lower the z until I hear it cut. Nice and slow. Okay, right there's a cut. And I'm gonna write down what my Z number is, okay? So I'm gonna bring it up just a hair. Okay, I'm gonna increase my spindle speed. Then I'm gonna bring it into my, in my X axis to where, to the number that I just wrote down. There at 30. I'm going to increase my RPMs. And I'm going to lower my Z right there. Okay. Now I'm going to cut out nice, nice even cut. Hold on. Okay, take a nice even cut all the way out past the edge of the shoulder. Okay, so that's my cut. I just cleaned up that face. Okay. Right, now if I bring it up, I can look at the shoulder and see if it cleaned up all the marker, which I'm sure it did. Yeah, so that's all cleaned up right there. All right. On the uh, spindle on the shoulder, it's got a radius on each on each shoulder on the corner. If you just do a skin cut when you're done, there should still be a corner break on your shoulder. If you took way too much material off, your corner break is gone. Um, again, you just need to take a skim cut, just enough to clean up that surface. I'm gonna move this all the way up. Okay, so now you got a nice, nice finish on there, and it cleaned up the entire thing. There's no marker left. If I wanna check this, then what I'm gonna do is move my 
X and Y out of the way. Got a magnetic base indicator. Okay. Okay. All right, I want my point to be 90 degrees or close to it so I get an accurate reading. If I'm at 45, I'm not getting an accurate reading on my indicator. So for this guy here, I'm gonna bring it up. Lock it in place. to an area on my indicator, and then I'm just going to turn it by hand. So this is a tense indicator. That whole surface all the way around is within one tenth, which is as good as you're going to get it. All right. I can then put my end mill holder on here again. I want to make sure that this surface is nice and clean and free of burrs. If this surface has got any uh, deformity to it, then what you want to get is a nice flat surface, a granite plate is best with some 320 um, wet and dry. And you put it on the 320, hold it like so, and you do a figure eight motion like this, okay, to clean up this surface, take any high spots off. Okay, I'm gonna wipe off my shoulder here. Put my end mill holder on. And you wanna lock it on pretty snug. That guy's on good and snug. Now, what I wanna, I don't wanna check the outside of my, my holder, I wanna check the inside bore. So now with the indicator, I put my indicator so it's straight like so and I come in and I also want to be at an area that's below my cross holes or my set screw hole. Again I'll turn this. So right now I have a variation of two to three tenths, okay? Which again, you're not gonna get it any better than that. That's about, that's as good as it gets right there. So, so again, if, if you have any imperfections on any of those mating surfaces, you're gonna have excessive run out, okay? And this is how you true it up. If my end mill holder was still running out, then that would tell me that there is a, that the problem is with the threads. You know, maybe I, was a little abusive with my machine and uh, was trying to cut with a half inch end mill holder going way too fast or, or this thing somehow, anyhow, somehow the threads got damaged. If the threads are damaged, you're gonna have to replace your spindle. But this is the, the quick and easy way to get everything as true as possible. And, you know, right now it's machine dead true to your, to your actual machine. So, so there you have it. Thank you.